In this video, I want to show you how to make higher resolution maps using wide field mode and the camera. So if you'll recall, uh, after you run AI Sample Finder, um, you'll get something like this. So just a, an image of your, your slide or whatever your sample carrier is, and some uh, further images typically in fluorescence uh, taken with the 5x objective within the AI Sample Finder wizard that shows you parts of your sample that you're interested in. All of that is fine. Uh, the problem is that sometimes if you zoom into those images, the 5x is not a very high resolution objective. So if you need to make decisions about what uh, things in your image you want to look at in more detail, um, often you sort of can't tell with the 5x image. And so um, in that case, you have to go around and hunt through um, individual spots using the confocal, which can be inefficient. So this is an example of uh, neurons and culture, and the transfected neurons are these bright dots. But if we are interested in, say, the neurites that extend from those uh, somas of those neurons, this resolution is really not enough for us to make decisions about where um, it would be best for us to image them, uh, to, to which which neurons to image. So, you know, if I switch to the 20x objective at 0.8 um, and I go uh, to live, let me just set this back here. Um, you can see, okay, like that maybe neuron looks interesting. It's the kind of want. And then if I go here, uh, I can kind of explore what other neurons might be of interest. But um, I certainly can't do it very efficiently uh, based on the original image and doing it with the confocal is slow. So there is an alternative to this, which is to layer on or to take an additional image um, using wide field, which is very fast compared to the confocal, uh, albeit at the cost of uh, very uh, minimal optical sectioning. So you, you, you will get blurriness from things that are above and below uh, the particular focal plane you're looking at. Um, but you can make maps that are at much higher speed. So how do you do that? So the way you do that is you load uh, settings that have been optimized by the MSL staff to help you do this. And they are in the list near the bottom. There are ones that say WF, that stands for wide field. There are a set that said WF image and WF map. And so the ones you want to use if you're trying to make uh, kind of quick maps of things are the map subsection. And which ones you use depend on whether you want to do maps using bright field, fluorescence and bright field, or just fluorescence. So for example, if we just bring up the one that's just fluorescence, you'll see that it has four possible channels, Psi 5, uh, a red fluorophore, a green fluorophore, and DAPI. You don't need to use all of them. You can just turn off the ones you don't uh, want. Um, and then if we switch here and go to live, you'll see an image in wide field of um, uh, of the particular place that you are in. And these images can be much faster to acquire than a confocal. So how do you adjust the settings for them? So first of all, if you go here and go to display, um, I typically find that if you set this to best fit and auto, uh, that adjusts nicely as you go along. So it's a good way of, of looking at contrast. And, and you have two things that you can adjust here, the LED power, and the exposure. So if you reduce the exposure, it will go faster, uh, but the quality image of the image will be lower. You know, we can go down to as low as you know a millisecond, and it'll look quite uh, poor. Um, and we can compensate if we want by increasing the LED intensity. So we could do something like this to get a fairly good image with minimal exposure. Once we have that, what we can say is, well, you know what? I, I actually want to get this whole region at that higher resolution uh, to be able to make a quick map at higher resolution than the original one so that then I can do confocal. And you can do that using all the tiling tools that you're familiar with. Um, so for example, this, which you know, for confocal, this would take a while, uh, but you'll see that um, for this uh, particular uh, uh, if, for this modality, wide field, it's actually not going to take that long. Uh, so I'm going to delete this. I think this is from a previous thing I was doing. Um, and I'm just going to check that the focus is OK. So I'm going to move to the current point, which is the middle. Just go to live. Let's see here. That seems about right. I'll stop this. 
I say set Z and move to next. So that's good. And then I'll just say start experiment. So you can see the speed at which this takes a preview. And you can see like it's tilted, so it's not all in focus. And this is the region where evidently I bleached it. Um, so maybe it wasn't wise to set it to 100%. Um, but this was just sort of for illustrative purposes. You can see how fast it was. And now I have an image with higher resolution than what I had before. And so this might be more helpful if I'm trying to see, oh, um, do these um, uh, do these neurons have branches or you know um, things like that, which on the 5x image is impossible to determine. So if you look, for example, here at this cluster, you, know, you can you can zoom in and see quite clearly. You can see the branching of these neurons here and here. Whereas if I look at uh, the version that I had at 5x, that's down here. You know, it's just not possible to see that. So if that has, um, if that sort of higher resolution view was necessary for me to make decisions about what to image, this is a way uh, of getting that information uh, more quickly than just looking around with a confocal. And you can do this with multiple fluorophores as well as uh, bright field or bright field by itself. So for example, if I load a setting that's fluo, MSL map fluo plus bright field, I can um, just set up the green channel. Let's, put, for example, go here and we'll make a, a smaller, um, let's see, whoops, I was in the wrong one. So we'll go here. Um, I'll leave this. I'm not going to crank up the LED as much because I'm afraid of bleaching. Um, but I want to set up the bright field. And so in this case, I'm going to increase the image intensity. So you can see that's pretty reasonable. Um, so we could take, uh, let's see, another another small area with both of those. All right. Uh, let's see. OK. Um, so let's try that. And this will be a two channel. I'm not sure what this reflection is, but you know, by the time you actually are on the microscope, we may have solved that. Uh, but you can see fluorescence in one channel, the bright field in the other. Um, and this can be useful, again, for you to sort of find your way around. Um, so th as I said, this is not a tool that you always need to use, but it can be quite helpful if the uh, resolution of the 5x, which we used to originally make these maps, is insufficient for what you're trying to do. Uh, for subsequent confocal imaging.